This is a Raspberry Pi Pico, and this is a Raspberry Pi Pico W. Do you want to know how to add an ESP32 to RP2040 just to make it work like a Raspberry Pi Pico W? Do you want to know how to communicate between the two microcontrollers? And do you want to know how to design a PCB to make your own Raspberry Pi Pico W? In this video, you will find all answers to these questions. I also shared the schematics and Gerbil files to GitHub in case you want to make your own. So check the link below in the descriptions. As you know, Raspberry Pi Pico is a microcontroller board released by the Raspberry Pi Foundation in January 2021. It is cheap, powerful, and it can be programmed in a variety of languages, including C, C++, Python, and MicroPython. It is now becoming increasingly popular with makers. Because they are so cheap, I bought five of them when they first came out but I didn't have time to get my hands on them right away. A few months after the release of the original Raspberry Pi Pico board in January 2021, the Raspberry Pi Pico W has also been released. The Raspberry Pi Pico W is a variant of the Pico with built-in wireless capabilities. Unfortunately, in my region, the Raspberry Pi Pico W is not currently available for purchase by hobbyists due to legal restrictions. So, I made my own version of it. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a popular choice for both hobbyists and professionals seeking reliable and trustworthy PCB fabrication services. With their easy-to-use online ordering system and a 24-7 expert support team, the whole process is hassle-free. Their service is super fast, with orders delivered right to your doorstep in just a few days. Best of all, their prices are incredibly affordable, starting at just $2 for 5 PCBs. And now, they have expanded their services to include flexible PCBs, giving you even more options to bring your projects to life. Thanks again to JLC PCB to make this project possible. The idea is simple, since the only difference between the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Raspberry Pi Pico W is the wireless connectivity. It won't be too hard to add a Wi-Fi module to add wireless connectivity to RP2040. First thing first, I need a schematic. You can't start without a schematic. In this case, the basic idea is to combine the circuitry on the RP2040 side with the circuitry on the ESP32 side. As you can see from my previous videos, I have built an ESP32 dev board, so I can manage to prepare the circuit for the ESP32 part. Luckily, the official circuit diagram for the RP2040 side is also available. Moreover, there is a detailed explanation 
of the circuit configuration. For those who don't know where to find the document, a link to it is also provided in the description section. In Chapter 2 of this document, you will find the minimum design example. This is exactly what I wanted. Just by following the example described in this chapter, I was able to draw the RP2040 related schematic. The explanations in this document are very detailed and easy to understand. And they even go into great detail about what to consider when laying out PCBs. This is a must read for anyone who wants to design their own original PCB using the RP2040. I highly recommend you grab a copy and take some time to read it. Chapter 3 contains descriptions of VGA, audio, and SD card related circuits. This time, I wanted to put an SD card on my board, so I only referred to the SD card section and to the circuit as described here. With the RP2040 side circuit completed, the next step is the ESP32 side circuit. For the ESP32 side, I just used the schematic from the previous project. So no serious struggles here either. There are several ways to communicate between microcontrollers, such as I2C, SPI, and UART. However, in this case, I decided to use a UART protocol because it is a simple and reliable way to transmit serial data between two chips. One of the main reasons I choose UART for this project is that it only requires two wires for communication, one for sending data and one for receiving data. This makes it easy to implement and minimizes the number of wires needed for the connection. This makes it easier to route between the two chips. Another advantage of UART is its simplicity. And like other protocols, UART does not require complex addressing schemes or message validation protocols. Instead, data is simply transferred in a continuous stream of bytes, making it easy to implement and debug. So I assumed it would be a good place to start experimenting and learning how to communicate between the two microcontrollers, and it turned out to be as expected. Once the schematic is done, the next step is to design the PCB. This PCB design is actually the most complex one I have ever done. It took me a couple of months of checking and rechecking. It felt like it was going to take forever. The routing around the RP2040 was particularly difficult because there was not a lot of room. And like the original Raspberry Pi Pico, I decided to use service mount components that were large enough to solder by hand. The Raspberry Pi Pico uses some smaller components with a package size of 0201, while I choose the same capacitors or resistors with a package size of 0603. This is just about the smallest size I can solder. As always, I ordered the PCB from JLCPCB, which is my sponsor for this video. This time I tried the black PCB. The black PCB is just amazing. The next step is the fun part, soldering. As always, I started from the lower parts and smaller parts. The RP2040 is the key component for this project and also the most difficult component to solder. At the start of our show, it requires precision and care to solder into place. Once the RP2040 is securely in place, I can move on to the next steps with the confidence that all the soldering process will be flawless.
after a few hours of soldering, which is both fun and backbreaking, it finally started to take shape, and it looks very promising. Unfortunately, I found an error in my PCB design. To be more precise, it was an error in my schematic. I discovered that I had incorrectly connected the RX and TX between RP2040 and the ESP32. Even though I checked the schematic many, many times, human error still managed to slip through. Fortunately, it was no big deal and relatively easy to fix. I cut the wrong connection on the board and reconnected the right pins with the two wires, as you can see even from the beginning of the video. This mistake reminded me of the need for a more effective verification process to prevent errors like this in the future. Once the bug is fixed, it is time to test. I won't go into too much detail about the testing process in this video, as it will make it quite long. However, I may summarize the testing process in another video in the future. For now, I'm happy to let you know that both the ESP32 and RP2040 sites worked without any problems. I also confirmed that the communication between the two microcontrollers works properly. Well folks, that ends today's video. If you are interested in the project, please check out the GitHub repository for more details and future updates. And feel free to play with it. If you find something wrong or something I can improve, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more exciting projects to come. See you next time. Thank you.